Today, uh, we are going to talk about something a bit different from uh, previous weeks. Today, the topic is only one, how to achieve win-win. Win-win. I think that how to achieve win-win, I, I would like to change the title, let's say, let's live and work with win-win philosophy. Okay, so we need to uh, uh, work, we need to live with win-win philosophy, and I will uh, share my ideas, my opinions with you, why we have to uh, live with win-win philosophy, why it's important. Who is thinking that you are living with win-win philosophy at the moment? Anybody living with a win-win? When you live, to, do you think about win-win? Nobody? Go song? Okay. This is exactly the response I was expecting. When I talk about win-win, it will sound very big, it will sound very formal, um, not uh, casual, not daily basis. It's something um, big value to achieve, something difficult to achieve. Yes. Sounds like it, right? So, uh, but I will explain, actually we are living with win-win every day without knowing. In our life, for example, the typical example of win-win is commercial transactions. When we talk about um, commercial transactions, long time ago, there was no money. Money is newly invented recently. So without money, what we did was we uh, meet up with a stranger. Okay? I have a farm, so uh, I have uh, a lot of chicken. Okay? I meet with a uh, fisherman, so you have a lot of fish. Can we change? I will give you one chicken. Can you give me 10 fish? Okay? He will say, no, 10 fish is uh, uh, too much. I will give you eight. Okay? One chicken is equivalent to uh, eight fish. Okay? So you, you find the uh, agreement, and then you exchange. That is commercial transactions, right? So commercial transactions cannot be happening if one of the party think it's not win-win. You only uh, have transaction when you think you are winning. Now we have a money, so same. Let's just say you are going for holiday. You are looking for your hotel. So you have a EB Star, you have a Novotel, you have a Movenpick, you have a Pullman, and then you see the price on the list, and you think, Okay, so uh, this time I am traveling with my parents. Okay? I want to make sure that my parents is enjoying their holiday. So maybe I should not choose Ibis this time because it's not only me. So I will choose maybe Pullman or Novotel. Hmm? Okay? And then uh, you think if the price the, you pay has a, a value for your experience. And if you think the, the, the money you pay is lower than the value you are getting, you make a decision to have a transaction. So you, we always think we are winning. You go to the toy shop, you buy toy for your children, and you say, oh, it's 500,000. Okay? If I spend 500,000, I can give this toy to my son, my daughter, and they will be very, very happy. Okay, when I see them very happy, is it bigger value or 500,000 is bigger value? And you decide, ah, this is too much. I will buy something 300. Okay? And then you feel like you are winning. So when we have a, a commercial transaction, it means two parties think they are winning, both of them. Same for legal contract. Okay, so one of the legal contracts, we can choose maybe tenancy agreement. So you have an uh, extra house, extra room, so you want to rent out. You find a tenant, and then you make a decision. Okay, so this room is one million per month. And your tenant is thinking, is it better to spend one million to, for this room, or should I sleep on the street? Okay. Maybe I should. Pay one million is better than saving one million and sleep on the street. Okay, I'm winning because I pay one million. Okay, and the owner same. Okay, should I get two million? Oh, nobody wants to pay two million, so I should. I can get only one million. Is it better to 
get one million and have tenants, or should I just give up one million and have it vacant? And I think hmm, maybe better to get one million rather than making vacant. So the owner thinks he's winning, she's winning. Employee agreement, same. So we are looking for a job. We are willing to spend nine hours, 10 hours, 12 hours at work. Okay, and then uh, we offer our, we get offered for our salary. Okay, so salary five million per month, three million per month, 10 million per month, and then we see, is it worthy to spend my half of my day at work from Monday to Friday, five days per week? If you think you're winning, you go ahead and sign. Company same, oh, this guy, very presentable, looking like hardworking, Okay, working with the integrity, mm, looking uh, uh, like a, he or she has a good leadership as well. Okay, so I'm willing to pay this money because company thinks we are winning. Now, another transaction, another uh, thing we are always working together with the win-win philosophy is human relations. If you just uh, look around your friends, why do you meet your friends? Because when you spend your time with your friend, you are winning. What do I mean? You enjoy the time, right? There's just something good about the person. That's why you are spending the time with that person. Either that person will be helpful for your future, or that person has a power to help you, or the person is so funny and enjoyable, so you want to spend time with that person. And whatever the reason is, you are getting something, you are winning something. That's why you are willing to have a relationship with someone. Okay? Husband and wife, same. When we have a spouse, okay, we have a lot of responsibility. Why we want to have that kind of a responsibility, giving up all the freedom and single life? Because we are getting a lot, we are winning. We, we have a security, we have a stable life, we have a constant love and care from someone who is next to me all the time. Whatever I do, that person will stand by me, trusting me and respect me, and that kind of feeling you cannot change with anything. So you make yourself responsible for biggest contract in your life called marriage. So everything is happening because we believe we are winning. But there are some uh, exceptions, and I want to share one of my experience with you. I do not want to uh, say the name of the hotel, but it was resort hotel. I was uh, used to work, and I can see that uh, from my uh, beginning of the period there, that hotel is very busy. We have a lot of uh, tourists, including a lot of uh, expat guests. Problem is, spa revenue is somehow very, very low. I could see that um, revenue is very steady, but low and steady. And I was uh, making some analysis and couldn't uh, figure out why the spa revenue is so low. And I decided to do some mystery calls. So I asked my friends to make uh, some phone calls and some visits to uh, my spa department and try to uh, uh, enjoy the spa to see what kind of problem we have in this department. And I found out the reason immediately. What's happening is uh, the spa department had six rooms, okay? six rooms, which was quite uh, sufficient enough considering the size of the property. The problem was when my friend tried to make a booking, I would like to take a, a spa a treatment this afternoon at 3 o'clock. Can I make a booking, please? And therapy is saying, uh, we are already full today. We don't have any therapist available. Okay, hang up the phone. When I checked, we were empty. Six rooms all empty. So it was a lie. Therapist was saying that we are full, even though we had a four therapists available and six rooms available. So we can see that where the problem coming from. So basically, our spa team was not motivated. They didn't care about the business. They had no motivation. They were just lazy. So as a new GM, I had to come up with the idea to change the situation. And I am usually approaching with a positive uh, side rather than 
okay, disciplinary, disciplinary, disciplinary. So I called all the spa therapists, and then we had a meeting together, and I said, this is very disappointing, this is not acceptable, and I will not uh, uh, tolerate similar situation again in the future. Plus, I want to introduce a new system called incentive. Okay, so from that moment onward, each time the spa therapist have a, a spa business, 50,000 is yours. Okay? So you just have a one massage, and then you get 50,000. So you serve two people, it's already 100. Okay? You serve 10 people, it's, you can get 500,000 per day. So it's a huge amount of incentive, okay? So, and then what happened was very interesting. Our spa revenue was four times higher than previous months from, from that time, four times. It was like a every day full, every day full, and then it was unbelievable. And the amount of money they get for the incentive was also unbelievably high. And then we had a problem after two months. After two months, we introduced SPA incentive. We had a small issue. All the therapist ladies went to the dentist and did this um, teeth, uh, what is it called? <laughs> huh? the, 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 the to uh, uh, adjust your teeth uh, shape. Yeah, you put the, the, the mechanic thing. Yeah? Yeah? All of them did this. So I, I heard it's not very cheap. So all of them did this yeah, to look pretty. Another problem is after three months, everybody changed the motorbike. They became very, very rich. Just imagine you get like 500,000 per day, only from incentive. And then after three months, um, I received a letter from union. Okay. And then they are asking for me to uh, attend the meeting they arrange. I was still new, only three months old in, with that property. And then the property had a very strong union. They were quite notorious. Okay? So I didn't want to refuse the first request from uh, my union. So I attended the meeting together with my EAM. My, I had a very nice EAM who has a lot of uh, uh, respect uh, and trust from the team member. So both of us attended a meeting. And surprisingly, I had 25 people in front of me. So 25 people were attending the meeting, and it was two of us. Ah, it was three, including HRM. So I had a TNC manager, I had a EAM, and me, three of us. And then we had a 25 people sitting. And agenda was only one. They said, they do not feel very happy that a spa therapist receive a lot of incentive. Therefore, they are requesting um, to remove the spa uh, incentive, or they, have, they are asking to introduce new incentive scheme for front office, driver, housekeeping, security, and FMB. Um, I try to explain. So uh, I listen. And then analyze what was the problem. And then I immediately respond this way. OK, look, I understand your frustration. Some of your colleagues are enjoying a lot of incentive fund. Okay, and then they are buying new bike, uh, motorbike. They are doing some treatment on their teeth and so on. It's not really motivating for you. But let me explain the situation. Let's say three months ago, everybody was enjoying Five, 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 five. Yeah. Now, you can see that some of your colleagues are enjoying nine, eight, seven, nine, eight, seven. But thing is, you, your share is also increased from five to six. So it's not five, 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 five. It's nine, eight, six, seven, nine, eight, six, 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 seven, eight, five. And there's nobody getting five. Why? Because service charge increase. Okay? So SUPA department is creating unbelievably high revenue comparing to previous months and year. So you can see that your service charge is increasing as well. So it's win-win. 
but some people win more and you are winning small. So do you want three, 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 and five, 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 or do you want nine, eight, nine, eight, six, seven, eight, six? And the answer from union was we want five, 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 five. So we canceled the incentive. We went back to five, five, five. So this is, so the reason I'm sharing this experience is because this is a typical example of lost and lost. We had the opportunity to improve, everybody gets more, right? But because some people get more than you, I do not want to see it. Even though I have to sacrifice uh, my share, I'm willing to do that to have the same amount of share. I cannot... Uh, See you winning more than me. So let's make sure all of us lose. This is a uh, very, very uh, interesting experience for me. Um, so now, considering this situation, we need to make sure that everybody, not only people sitting in this room, but all of our colleagues understand why win-win is so important. Win-win is not just a one concept or philosophy or value from management side. Okay? This is something we have to share with the entire team members to ensure that everybody understands the benefits from win-win, why win-win is so important, what's the significance about this value, so that everybody pursue the value of win-win. The reason we have to achieve win-win is sustainability sustainability. This is only reason why we need win-win. When we talk about sustainability, we are talking about sustainable partnership. So we have a partnership. Let's say we have a vendor, we have a contractor, we have outsourcing. We want to make sure we can work together for a long time. We pay money, to the pest control company, they make sure we do not have a mosquito and we can continue to work together. Win-win. Sustainable business, okay? We do not want to have a successful year and then fail, fail, fail. We want to make sure that we want to keep performing well. Last year, we enjoyed very nice financial performance, right? But at the same time, what was good is the other side of the operation. We try very, very hard to make sure that our quality improves as well. If you sacrifice quality in order to improve GOP for short time, six months, one, one year, maybe maximum two years, yes, you can increase your GOP. GOP increase is very easy. You, you have uh, so many things you can do to maximize uh, profit. Because at the end of the day, if you do not spend any money, GOP goes up. Very easy. But if you do that after three months, six months, one year, the revenue drop significantly. Yeah, because your food quality will be terrible. Okay? There will be lots of things broken. Yeah? There's a lack of linen, lack of cutleries, and mm, mm, computer is not working properly. Everything will be difficult after one year, two years. And then it's very difficult to maintain same financial performance. So, that's why we cannot just focus on short-term result. We need to make sure that it's sustainable. Agreement, same. So when we talk about tenancy agreement or our employee agreement, same. Okay? When you say, wow, I got a lot of uh, um, money considering I, my position is only supervisor. Do you think it's good? Maybe not. Having a uh, highest salary is not usually, usually only good. Let's say uh, uh, when I talk about GM's salary, I do not want to be the GM with the highest salary. Why? Because if I'm the most expensive GM, it will be very difficult to get a job next time. Hmm? Very obvious, right? There's a standard. There's a owners know that our GM's salary is between how much and how much. They will think, ah, okay, when we have a new GM, salary is usually around this range. And then suddenly, there's a new GM, and then uh, you have to pay 50% uh, more. Do you think uh, I will be higher? 
No. So if your salary is very high comparing to uh, uh, other uh, people with the same position, it's good for one year maybe, but it will be very difficult to find the next position. Why? Because it's not sustainable. Sustainable success, we talk about it. Yeah. Business, same. Success, same. Um, there's a uh, term called sharpen the saw. Mm. We talked about performance and development. Okay. Make sure we do not spend the whole day only to perform. We have to spend our time for exercise. We have to spend our time for reading. We have to spend our time for planning, organizing. Why? Because we want to make sure we can make a continuous success. We have to invest time. We need to spend time for training. Sustainable relationship, same. All of the relationship, we want to make sure it lasts forever. But how often do we fail to keep the relationship for a long time? It's all because we did not come up with a win-win. You take more and the relationship cannot last for long. We have to make sure we get same. Give and take. You give, you receive, and then everybody happy, everybody win, and that, that relationship can go on. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about the hotel. So how can we apply this win-win, sounds very um, conceptual, into a hotel business? When we operate one hotel, when we want to make sure that hotel becomes successful, it's not only one party, one person, uh, one group of people contributing. We have so many different parties get involved in order for us to make sure that one hotel becomes successful. So we have an owner okay, who will be investing for the property. We have a management. We have a staff members, yeah, us. We have contractors, vendors. We have outsourcing. We have a labor union. We have a government, local community, we have a schools. We have some more, but let's talk about this first. So you can see we have so many different parties getting involved only for one business unit like us. Owners, very obvious that they, what they want is profit because they invested capital. So if hotel business cannot provide them return, that's end, at the end of the story, right? We cannot continue our story. GOP profit is the first thing we have to think. Why? Because at the end of the day, what's the meaning to have a business if a business doesn't produce any profit? They invested money. Okay? So business comes first. Okay? In order for us to sustain hotel business, we have to make sure that we produce profit. Management. Okay? So we are talking about accord here. So we have to pay accord fee. On time, everybody has to win. If a hotel becomes successful, yeah, Akuru fee goes up. If hotel is suffering, yeah, Akuru will pay more attention, try to have the hotel to be successful. Okay, we, we, have to, we are all related. There's no win and lose. Staff members, it's us. We have uh, lots of staff members who are highly motivated, hardworking, totally committed, super brilliant, and supportive. Okay. If you do not look after your team member who are like that, they will eventually move away. People who are smart, energetic, uh, positive, supportive, they are usually welcomed by everyone. So it's very easy for them to move to another hotel. So as a management, as a manager, as a GM, as a HOD, if you find the talents who are really contributing a lot, we have to do something. We have to train them, we have to motivate them, we have to promote them, we have to say thank you. Otherwise, they move. And then uh, at the end of the day, the people who are left is people who are not capable to get another job in another place. So all bad people will remain and all good ones go. Contractors and vendors, very interesting. Um, usually, contractors and vendors, yes, we have uh, very big companies, um, like uh, Dilmak T, yeah? big companies like uh, Bintang. Mm -hmm. 
except for those big companies, usually our contractors or vendors are uh, smaller than us. They are likely to um, follow our instructions. If we push the price, they are likely to cooperate. If we say uh, we need your support, sponsorship, they are likely to contribute. Why? Because they are more vulnerable than us. We know that. But we also need to think about sustainable management. Yes, um, no, it's good to get sponsor, sponsorship from them. It's good to negotiate the price so that we can get better price. Yes, a good example is during the renovation, we managed to have a better price for the internet and TV and so on, which makes sense, right? Because our revenue goes down more than half. So, yes, we suffer. So, vendor is contractor. They are sacrificing their share of profit as well. So, it's, yeah, we are sharing the pain. At the end of the day, after we finish the uh, renovation, we have to make sure that our revenue goes up and their revenue has to go up. Should be win-win. Um, one example. Let's say we, have, um, uh, we are located a very remote area. Let's assume that we are not in Bogor. We are in very remote area like Sumatra or Blombok or, okay? And then we have uh, only uh, one uh, farm. Okay? Only one farm, vegetable farm. So they are the one who produce most kind of uh, uh, the, the vegetables we require for our cooking. So lettuce and carrots and uh, radish. And, yeah, they are providing most of the uh, basic ingredients for us. Okay? And they, we are the almost only business unit. They are making um, most of their profit from us because we are the only big company, international chain hotel. So we buy a lot from them, and they rely on us. And we know that um, if we push them, they will reduce, they will decrease the price. So we push and push and push, and eventually they went bankrupt. So profit margin was not good enough to make their business sustainable. They couldn't afford to continue the business because um, their biggest business partner, which was us, were pushing their price too low. So they went bankrupt. What's happening to us? Now we lost only vegetable supplier in the region, right? So we have to buy from Jakarta. So we are spending two times more money than before. If we looked after this local supplier, try to achieve win-win, we could have enjoyed local ingredients, which was fresh and cheap, comparing to other vendors outside the region, continuously with the sustainability. But because we were so greedy, we didn't think about win-win, we only wanted to win and lose, they eventually went bankrupt, and then our business became less profitable. Outsourcing, labor union, government, all the same. I mean, all of them, we, we have to make sure that we are both winning. One good example is, um, when I first arrived in Indonesia, there was a, um, uh, the money I had to pay called visa on arrival. I had to pay $20 per person. Two years ago, that was canceled by government. Now, the foreigners, most of the countries, I mean, there are some other countries, it depends on the, which country you are coming from, but many countries, foreign, when foreigners enter to Bali or Jakarta, they are free to enter. We don't pay $20, $25 anymore. The visa on arrival is gone. Considering how many people are entering to the airport from outside the Indonesia, government has given up a lot of money because it's a big money, right? Everybody paid $25, and government gave up. Why? Because by giving up the tax received from foreigners, they will improve the performance of tourism, right? There will be more and more people entering to the country. And eventually, that will help the business inside the Indonesia, okay, especially tourism, Hotels will perform better, airline will perform better, there will be new hotels coming up, 
and that will eventually give more tax to government. So sometimes you have to step back and then give more and then eventually you have a more return. That's another way to achieve win-win. When I was in Malaysia, there was something uh, dramatic change. Um, Malaysia was opposite. There was uh, no uh, visa on arrival fee. And during my time, government introduced the new fee, which was 25 ringgit per person to enter the country. And that was making huge negative impact on tourism. The government was trying to get some more tax. I'm not sure um, they maybe were in need of additional fund, right? They needed more budget to, do, uh, to spend uh, money for something else. But eventually, that action was making all the hotels and airlines suffer in Malaysia. I heard that they decided to cancel it within one year. Local community, same. So we have uh, some kampungs here. Mm -hmm. yeah, we all know that we try to look after a local community, right? We have uh, a CSR. Corporate social responsibility. We want to make sure that kampung around the hotel business, uh, they are developing their living uh, style, living standard. We want to make sure that they have a good infrastructure. We provide some help, not only financial help, but we provide some training. We provide some facilities. I mean, uh, for the last 22 years, the hotel has been doing it for uh, almost constantly, and now EB study is joining as well. Why we look after local community? Because we want to make sure that people live around here. If this area becomes very difficult to live, all people will move out. What's going to happen? Who's going to work here then? If we do not have a people from Kampung, who is going to work for Novotar and EB style? So it's very important to have a strong relationship with the local community, look after them, and create a rapport. Schools, once again, I, I strongly uh, believe in looking after trainees. Okay? Trainees are not cheap labor force. They are not here um, to clear the table, clean the room by themselves. Okay? They are here to learn. Yeah. So we have to remember win-win. Yes, we can utilize their labor. It's, it's wonderful to have people around us who is willing to help us, but we have to teach. Everybody has to earn something. Every day, you have to have a briefing. You need to have a small 30 minutes training session. Make sure when they go home, they just do not feel, today I just worked and didn't learn anything. This is fair. Make sure when your trainee go home, they realize that ah, oh, today's experience was good, especially I learned this. Hmm? At least they remember one thing they learned. So that the next day, they feel more energetic to come to work to help you. And then they speak about the hotel and Ibis style Bogo to their friends and teachers. And they know that ah, if we send students to the hotel and Ibis style Bogo, the trainees are very satisfied, they learn a lot. Then eventually they have a good chance to get the job here as well. Win win. How many times I hear the complaint from HOD saying that I need more trainee, I need more trainee. If you need more trainee, please can you look after your trainees so that next batch we have a double. Very important. Now we are getting into a serious topic. I want you to remember this today. Win-win is not about reaching compromise. In many cases, we think win-win is giving up and giving up. You give up five, I give up five. That's not win-win. We talked about spa incentive, right? That is lost and lost. Win-win is not compromising. Win-win is achieving the best for everyone. It is not you give up, I give up. It is let's find a way to maximize our result. You win, I win. We have to remember that it is not zero sum game. Win win is not zero sum game. The reason sometimes win win doesn't happen is because so many of us believe it is zero sum. In case you are not sure about zero sum, zero sum means total is always zero. 
So if you have two, I have minus two. If I have a three, you have a minus three. Why? Because total has to be zero. If a hotel have a five, vendors have minus five. If supplier get two, hotels lose two because it should be zero. Let me tell you why it doesn't work that way. Inflation. We all know that every year we have an inflation, right? Inflation, 10%, 5%, the, the price goes up. So 10 years ago, let's say the housing in Bogoraya, I'm not sure how much it was, maybe 200, for example, for one house. So 200 million for one house. Now maybe it's 2 billion. Okay, so 10 times higher. Okay, so it's inflation, right? Inflation is not increase of value. Once again, inflation is not increase on value, okay, which means 10 years ago, nasi goreng was 5,000. Now, nasi goreng is 50,000. It doesn't mean that value of nasi goreng increased by 10, 10 times. Nasi goreng value cannot go up because maybe 10 years ago, nasi goreng was more valuable than now because not many people have a lot of money. So these days, who, who cares? Nasi goreng is very easy to cook, easy to get, right? It's a basic food. So value of nasi goreng is actually went down. But price went up by 10 times. Why? Because value of money went down. Right? Value of object, service, product was not moving up. Maybe it's down. Right? But value of money went down. That's why price went up. Okay, here we have a question. Why? Why value of money went down? Anybody knows the answer? Why value of money went down? So before, if we had uh, 100,000 rupiah, you could have bought something valuable. You could have lived for one month. Now, 100,000 rupiah, you cannot live one month. You need uh, at least 2 million, 3 million. Why the value of money went down? When value goes down, there's only one reason. There are too many. If you have uh, too many, value goes down. If you have a small number, value goes up. Do you understand? Okay, so the reason inflation is happening every year is because we have more and more money every year. Why we have more money? Because bank is printing the money. Indonesian bank, what is the, the central bank in Indonesia? Bank of Indonesia. Bank of Indonesia has authority to print money, right? They print money every day. So every day, number of money goes up. So every day, value of money goes down, right? It's very obvious. That's why we have inflation. When you um, borrow money from bank, when you get the mortgage from the bank, loan from bank, let's say you borrow 10 billion from bank. So bank will give you 10 billion. But actually, 10 billion is only transfer, right? There's no actual paper money. Nobody, nobody give you 10 billion by paper, okay? There's only you, in your account, right? It's a number. Bank can give you 10 billion if they have a 1 billion. Legally, bank should have only 10% of the fund. So when you go to a CIMB or uh, the BCA or HANA Bank, whatever it is, and ask, can I have a 10 billion from you? They said, yes, I will transfer 10 billion to your account but they don't need to have a 10 billion in their shape. They don't need to have. If they have a 1 billion, they can give you 10 billion. So 9 billion has just created. That's why Bank of Indonesia has to print every day money because new money is keep creating. When you borrow money, it's creating new money because it doesn't exist. It never exists. It is called bubble. And 10 years ago, the whole world went bankrupt, right? Because of this. Because money never exists, but we print. Why we talked about it? Because if you think 
this theory, every day we are printing money. So, do you think we have enough money for everyone? Or if you get 10, I get nothing. We have enough money. We have so much money in the world. Because we are keep printing. So, when you have more, it doesn't mean that people around you will have less. It's not zero sum. It has nothing. My, when I have a more salary, it doesn't mean that you, your salary will go down. When we give more GOP to the owner, it doesn't mean that our salary will go down. When, owner, when management decides to increase our salary high, it doesn't mean that owner's GOP will go down. This is wrong. It doesn't work that way. We have a way to make sure everybody gets more. Owner gets more, Accor gets more, employee gets more, labor union gets more. Everybody can win. But because we think it's zero sum, we do not believe it. That's why we are fighting to get more. Because if I give you more, I get less. That's a misunderstanding, especially for money. Today, I'm going to close the section with one uh, interesting story. This one is opposite of spa incentive. Something successful based on win-win. Anybody know, recognize this hotel? Which hotel is it? This is famous Novotel. <laughs> yeah, this is Novotel Lombok. Okay. I was lucky enough to uh, work as a general manager there for two years. So this is Novotel Lombok. Uh, Novotel Lombok's main selling point is private beach. So you can see that. So here's uh, the restaurant and we have a spa and we have a village here. And the hotel building is around here. So we have a hotel building and then 25 villa and then restaurant and meeting room and so on. And then we have uh, this huge private beach. It's huge, you can see. Huge and there's nothing. Okay. And this private beach is the main selling point of the Hotel Lombok. Because of this, ADR is very, very high. You never find this kind of setting in another place. And this one is beachy hut. It's gazebo. Okay? So you have a, um, we used to have a, like a 25 gazebo and I added seven more. So I believe there are 32 gazebo here. Okay? So this 32 gazebo is very, very important for our guests because what you do when you stay at the Hotel Lombok is you wake up at 8 o'clock in the morning. Yeah, you are tired. Okay? You brush your teeth, go to the restaurant, have a breakfast. After breakfast, you come here. You, you, you occupy one, and then you sleep. Okay? You wake up, drink, eat, sleep. <laughs> okay? until, until 7 o'clock. <laughs> yeah? And then uh, maybe 6 o'clock. And then you go and take a shower and go out for dinner, right? Yeah, so everybody spend whole day here. This is the main area of Novotel Lombo. Okay, so I joined the hotel, and as usual, I was making some analysis on TripAdvisor. And I found something very interesting. Number one complaint, most frequent complaint was not food, food quality, it was not room cleanliness, it was not staff service, it was beach sellers. So, they are sitting here. It's, it's just look at this. It's a beautiful environment. Very, very peaceful and you know, a nice breeze. And there's an absolutely no noise. Only the wave. So you are trying to relax and then someone visit you. Okay. Bracelet. Okay. Yeah. Coconut. Yeah. Okay. So you say, no, no, I don't need. Okay. And then she goes away. He goes away. After five minutes, another one. Bracelet! <laughs> Every 10 minutes. Huh? Okay. Why is happening? Do you know Lom where no Lombok is? Yeah? Lombok is right next to Bali, right? Size of the Lombok is similar to Bali, so very big island. Okay? Lombok has a significant difference between north and south in terms of climate. In north part, which is usually uh, well developed, they have a, a lot of rain. 
Yeah? It's a very rainy region. So because of the uh, amount of rain, they can do rice field three times per year. So you harvest three times. Okay? March, June, and uh, uh, October, three times. So everybody is very rich. Yeah, every, every day you go out and then you get rice and a lot of vegetables and you know, everything is so opulent. If you go to south, okay, if you go to Lombok, you can see it's, it's like a stone. Yeah? It's a rock. You don't see much green. The reason is never rains. From March until December, almost no rain. Zero rain. So, you can do rice field only once a year. Only one time. So you can see that basically the money you can get comparing to North is only 30%, right? So everybody in South area is quite challenged economically. They do not have enough money. 21 years ago, this new hotel was built here. Okay. Only big business around the area. So you can see the whole local people became so excited. We have an international business in our region. Okay. There are many Kampung people who do not have a toilet, who do not have electricity. And we have this business. So of course, I have to go there to make money. I make a bracelet. I take a coconut, okay, and I make a, a clothes, local clothes, and try to sell to the. There were so many expats sitting there, tourists who had a dollar, who had money, yeah. So I want to make money. So since opening of Novotel Lombo, it was always like that. Local people come to the hotel, try to trying to sell something, and we had a meeting with the HODs. Some of the HOD are like a local basis, working there for more than 10 years, 15 years. And then uh, we discuss, okay, so uh, is this problem always like that? Yes, always we had a problem, always complain. Okay. What kind of uh, actions have we taken from previous management? So uh, we had uh, this action plan, we had uh, this action plan, this, 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 and many of them were based on win and lose. So hotel wants to win, right? Because we do not want to have a complaint from the guest. So what we did was we called the police to block the area. So we sometimes scare them away. Most um, progressive uh, idea was we created some uh, night market for them um, beside the hotel, okay, next to the hotel. And most of them, more, all of them did not work. Especially when we try to use force of course, they reacted with a force. So if we push them away um, with our power and security and police, what they did was they blocked the road. Yeah. So tourists cannot come into the hotel, many things like that. Okay, so we had to find a solution based on win-win. How can we ensure that hotel wins and local people wins? What do they need? They need what? Money, right? They need money. Okay, so we have to give them money. How? How can we give them money without sacrificing hotel money? Okay, that was my mission. Because if I give money every month, uh, I give you uh, 10 million to community, that's win and lose, right? So it's not win-win. I have to find a way to have a win and win. This was the solution. Okay. What we did was, we created, we sacrificed one of the beach hut. So uh, it was right in the middle of our beach. Okay, so best location of the hotel. So this uh, beach hut was converted into a shop. Okay? So this is shop. So they put all of their uh, things here, and coconut here, and then bracelet here, and then we made a rule. How we made a rule? We had a meeting with the chief of Kampung, okay, together with our EAM. Okay, so we, we sit down and then we say, we want you to make sure every day in the morning you come to this shop, beach seller shop, okay, at 9 a.m. and you leave at 5 p.m. Okay? You cannot come early, you cannot come late. You have to always come at 9, 
you have to always stay until 5. Okay? And then you have to wear uniform. We are giving them uniform. Okay? You have to wear the same thing. And then you cannot have more than 4 people okay? per shift. Okay? And then you cannot go out to bother. You cannot speak to our guests. You have to wait until guest comes to you. This is the rule. To make us win. Hotel will win, right? On return, if you make us win, we will buy 20 bracelets per day. We buy 20 bracelets per day, hotel buy, and then we buy 30 coconut from you. Okay? Before we make this decision, we ask them, so at the moment you are bothering all the guests one by one, how many do you usually sell? They said, we sometimes sell uh, 10 bracelets, um, 10 coconut per day. Okay, so from now on, you don't need to go there. I will buy, the hotel will buy 20 bracelets and 30 coconut every day. Okay? Every day. If you stay inside the shop. Of course, they, they will be so happy, right? Because they usually sell only 10, but now hotel is buying 20. Okay, coconut 30. But hotel did not lose anything. Why? Because we cancel the other um, gift. Where on arrival, you give the small gift for the VIP guests, right? The club, uh, gold member, platinum member. Novotel Lombo has so many gold member, platinum member, and uh, small children. So you need to have some uh, kind of a gift anyway. This is cheaper. This bracelet that we got, I remember, like 5,000 per piece. They usually sell 10,000, but we buy at 5,000 because we buy a lot. And then we use it for VIP um, the gift and also children amenity. That's why we need 20 per day. Coconut, what we did was, this is our gardener. Our gardener will every morning, he will arrive in the restaurant and then uh, with this traditional outfit, and then he will open the coconut in front of people and give it to our guest. So Novotel Lombok has coconut in the morning. Complimentary. So our breakfast satisfaction was picking up dramatically. So you never find the hotel providing fresh coconut. So our IPS was dramatically going up. So hotel was winning. And furthermore, the reason of this photo is because they stay inside the shop in the middle of the beach looking professional with all the uh, product in a row, uniform, became so popular. All the guests spending whole day on the beach, they go there. You know, it looks interesting, right? I'm mean, lying down all day doing nothing, beer, beer, beer. Okay, so I want to go. What do you have? Their, their business was so successful. <laughs> So, so we, this is one of the best examples I can think of in terms of win-win. So we have to remember that win-win is not sacrificing you small, me small. Do not give up. We should not give up. We, are not, we should not compromise. Win-win is not compromising. Win-win is try to find a solution which will be the best for all the parties involved. And before we do that, we have to remember, beginning part is, we have to always remember that it's not zero sum. You get more, I get less, no. You get more, I still get more. So do not feel afraid to give more because you can get more by giving.